you know that that is that's the number one yeah. issue I've seen people make yeah. is not managing their content by not putting it in this, the group. The first time a lot of new developers use Composer, it's like I think they think it's magic, and it's not. It's not doing anything for you automatically that you don't help it do. And the thing you need to help it do is manage your content. So let's I'm going to show you what the bad thing, I'm going to show you the right the wrong way and the right way what it will look like and then I'll show you the code to explain why it didn't work and then why it did work. So there are two examples, one's called bad management and one's called good management. Let me show you the directory here so it's really clear. So there is within the composer scene manager, which is in Hangout 124, folder three bad management, folder four good management. So let's look at bad management. Okay, both of these examples are going to be exactly the same. They're going to have two scenes. Scene one will randomly draw some red dots. Scene two will randomly draw some green dots. Both of them will have a button that allows us to transition back and forth between the scenes. Now ideally, what would happen here is that the scenes would own the content and when they transition away, that content would get removed. That's what I want it to do. But when I do the bad management example and I click scene button two, scene one comes in, so I'm sorry, scene two comes in, I get the green dots, but my red dots are still here. What happened? Then I click scene one, I go back to scene one, I get more red dots. So what this tells me, as an, an experienced composer user, is that the composer is not managing my content. It doesn't know about my dots. What we should see is this. Let's look at good management. Same thing, random red dots. Click scene two. The red dots get taken away. The green dots slid in, which means that they got drawn and the, the scene management system then brought them on screen. Yeah, I think this is a, this is a really common thing because, uh, like we mentioned before, you will go to, into the documentation, grab the scene template, create yourself a, a file, a scene one, and then cr you know copy that to have a scene two, and then create a, a, a transition between the two, and go, hey, what happened? You know, the, the, the things don't work the, the way you think they do, but. It's like you're saying, you, you have to do it a certain way, and you're about to tell us what, what that way is. Right. So let me show you the difference between these two scene files. This is so simple. It, it, it just boggles the mind, but people do this over and over. I don't know. I'm, I'm not picking on people. I should be nice. It's an easy, easy mistake to make, and it's an easy mistake to fix, and I'm going to show you how to fix it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you side by side one of the scene files from the wrong way, which is on the left side, and a scene file on the right way, which is on the right side. And both of these are exactly the same with one small change. Let's go down to our creation uh, method. And in this example, I'm doing all the creation right in the body. I don't have any special functions that are defined somewhere else to do the building. Everything's done right here in the method. On the left side, what I've done is uh, I start it, my code starts up, I print out a little comment, this is just for me, so I know that it's starting. I look in the event and I grab self.view, which is the group that is supplied by Composer for managing my content. It's a scene group. Um, it's, a it's a typical traditional scene group as provided by Corona. It's a standard content um, container to put objects in to move them around, to manage them, to delete them all at once, stuff like that. Uh, so what did I do? Um, let's skip down to the part where I make the circles, which is where I made the mistake. Down here I call display new circle and I choose a random x coordinate, random y coordinate, and I choose a random radius between 10 and 20. That's what these little bits of code are doing. But nowhere in here did I take the time to insert my circle into the group. 
So what happens instead is Corona says, oh, you don't want me to put it in a special group? I'll put it in the default group, which is the top group, the current group. And so at this point, the circles are not owned by anybody. They're not managed by the scene. Scene doesn't know about them. Very, very simple mistake. Easily corrected. All you gotta do, let me see if I can get these both to show at the same time, or at least enough of the code. So all I've done here, same function call, but the very first argument I pass in the screen group. Now another way to do this is like this. I'll show you because uh, I notice a lot of people do not use this format. I don't understand why. But whatever, everybody can do things the way they like. Create the object just like you did before, but then do this. I'll, I'll blow it up a little bit so you can see it. Two right ways to do this are pass screen group as the first argument. And what that will do is it will insert the circle into the composer group that is being managed by this scene and the composer group, uh, this scene will then own it, it'll move it, it'll delete it, take care of the memory management, everything, all taken care of for you. Or make a circle, do not pass the screen group in, instead do it the old way, the x and y coordinates first, and then call screen group, which is a scene group in Corona, and say insert and the handle which I stored right here I, I got the handle to the circle pass that in and insert it into the group same exact thing uh, personally if I'm, I'm teaching, one line programmer go ahead if I'm teaching this to a, a group of people that are just learning the, how to use groups or how, how to do scene management this way the yeah. second method is usually much easier to understand uh, it, it just simply makes more sense to break it into two separate lines. Right. I, I understand that where people are coming from as far as why they do it this way. The thing I don't understand is, is why people don't eventually graduate to doing it in one line. Right. There's there's a difference here. There's I said these are exactly the same. That is not yes. true. There is there is something you can do on this line of code that you cannot do by doing it this way. Which is there's the option with insert to tell the corona system do not translate the coordinates for me. So if your group has been offset by a certain amount and I call this line of code and my circle is at coordinates 10 10 and my, my group has been moved to the right by 10 really my, my circle is going to show up at 0 10 on the screen. So this one's at minus 10, this one's at plus 10. The way it visually appears on the screen is 0, 10. But you can, I believe you can set this to false. It's been a while since I've done this. And then what Corona will do is say, oh, 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 you don't want me to add these coordinates together? You want this to literally be the same position it's currently at on the screen? It will then be at... 10, 10. But within the group, it'll have been translated over to minus 10 or plus 10. I, see, I don't, this is why I don't do it because I can't even give you the example. I get it all <laughs> messed up in my head. The point is, do I automatically move it for you or not? That's the choice you're making here with this additional argument to insert. Okay. 